All right, welcome back to Jesus TV, where I'm going to teach you this term here, biblical proportions. Have you ever heard that before? Biblical proportions. Well, let's look at an example here. The tsunami wrought destruction of biblical proportions. The tsunami wrought destruction of biblical proportions. What does that mean? Okay, this word wrought, that's kind of an old English word, um, which means to kind of bring about, to make happen, right? So the tsunami made destruction happen, right? It, it wrought, it wrought destruction, right? Of biblical proportions. Okay. Got a hair in my mouth. <laughs> so, uh, the tsunami wrought. Now, what is what, are, what, are, what does that mean? Biblical proportions. What, what is that word biblical? Biblical. Have you ever heard that? Well, that, that means the Bible, right? That's the adjective form of the, the word the Bible. I've got a Bible right here. Look at a huge book. Yeah, wow. That's a, a massive book. Actually, I've got about, probably about 20 Bibles in my house. I've got a, a Bible addiction. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I could probably have at least 20 Bibles in my house. I'm a, I'm a Bible collector. I should start a collection of, uh, of Bibles. But anyway, um, so this word is the adjective form of the noun, right? This is, uh, the word Bible is a noun, right? It's, it's a thing, just like laptop, desk, microphone. You can hear me, right? So these are nouns. Biblical is the adjective form. Form. Now, usually when people write the word Bible, it's, it's capitalized. So if I'm writing this, right, um, does it say here? Yeah, I mean, here it says you can see it's, well, you can't see it. It's, it's too small. But the word Bible is, is capital. The, the B is capital. But very often when people write it in the adjective form, it's a lowercase b. Okay, so just a, just a minor point there. Okay, so that's what biblical means. What about proportions? What does proportion mean? Well, that's a, actually a great word. It means, um, well, it's like a measurement or comparison. Okay, so when you hear the word proportion, think of these words, measurement and proportion, like, or sorry, measurement and comparison, right? We're kind of comparing something as a part of something else or something in relation to something else, right? So take a look at um, Humpty Dumpty here, right? So Humpty Dumpty is an egg. Have you ever heard of Humpty Dumpty Smash? Like, if you know the story of Humpty Dumpty. So <laughs> Humpty Dumpty's an egg. Look at his small legs, his tiny legs. Like his legs are, are out of proportion to his body. All right, so his body is big, right? But look at his tiny legs. They're, they're not... <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, how could these small legs support his huge body? It, it's out of proportion, right? So we could say Humpty Dumpty's legs are out of proportion to his body. It means we're comparing the size of his legs to his body. And there, it's like there's something wrong, right? It's If his legs were bigger, then it would be like in proportion, but it's not in proportion. It's out of proportion. So this is a bit a bit weird, right? Um, now, Humpty Dumpty is a nursery rhyme. I'm not sure if you if you've ever heard of it. Let me know in the comments if you have heard of of this nursery rhyme. Maybe in your language you have a a similar one. I don't even know. Is it in English? Nursery rhyme, or maybe we stole it from some other language like German, or I'm not sure. But um, so the word nursery. Uh, means like this relating to children, right? So a nursery rhyme is is like a song or poem for children. Okay, when you were a kid, did you ever hear nursery rhymes? Maybe your parents read you nursery rhymes or your school teacher, or whatever. There are a lot of nursery rhymes in English. You can just go on Google and search for nursery rhyme and, you know, there's hundreds, right? So I'm sure this one, the story of Humpty Dumpty, um, will be one of them. You'll find it there. So nursery, right? A nursery, um, the word nursery, like very often, um, well, like, uh, 
maybe like a job, if you work at a company, maybe the company will have a nursery. That's just a place where the babies can go. Like if you're a mother, right? I mean, here in North America, women work who have, who have young babies, right? I mean, it's after maternity leave, right? If a woman is uh, is pregnant, you know, toward the end of her pregnancy, she can go on maternity leave, which means she can still get paid, you know, by being home. She doesn't have to go to work, right? And then after she gives birth for a period of time, she doesn't have to go back to work right away. That period of time is called maternity leave. But after maternity leave, I mean, what's she going to do with her baby if she goes back to work, right? Um, is she going to take the baby to daycare somewhere? Sometimes companies have a like a daycare. So that's kind of what the, a nursery, when you, when you see the word nursery, just think of like babies and like small kids, right? Um, so here's the, here's the nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. What does that mean? I'll read it again. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Okay, so there's this egg. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sees this egg. Why is there an egg sitting on a wall? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know what this means. It's just one of these it's one of these things in you know in English, sometimes children's stories or nursery rhymes they don't really make sense it might have a meaning i don't know I, I i don't know what what it is but i mean we can see what the words mean right so humpty dumpty is the name of the egg that's the egg's name i think it's a ma man male egg humpty dumpty i don't know what why he's named that so humpty dumpty sat on a wall so there's this egg sitting on the wall right Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. <laughs> For some reason, he fell off the, the wall and, I guess, broke into a million pieces. Right? If you've got an egg, you drop an egg, it breaks, right? So all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Why... Would the king and his, like, horses and men try to put Humpty together again? That's such a weird thing. I mean, imagine being a horse, right? You, you know, you see an egg on a wall. The egg falls off. And then suddenly you're a horse. You're called into action. You're galloping out to the, to, you know, to where this egg is, right? The way a, a, when a horse runs, that's called galloping, right? You're galloping, gallop, 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 gallop. You get to the egg, try to put it together again. Darn, I don't even have hands. How can I put this egg together again? You think about a bunch of horses trying to put an egg together again. I'm sure, pretty sure, uh, the horses would, would cause more damage to the egg than, than help. I mean, you're, you know, horses don't have hands. Horses have hooves, right? So if a horse is, uh, if there's an egg, the last thing the egg wants is uh, just a, a herd of horses. Is a, is, a, is a group of horses called a herd? Um, I think so. A herd of horses? No, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. See, sometimes even native English speakers get confused about these things. A herd of cows. Yeah, cows are a herd. Um, a herd of horses. Somehow, somehow that doesn't sound right. I can't remember the word. If you know the word, let me know down in the comments. It might be herd. Um, I'll think about it. If I, uh, if I find the right answer, if it's not herd, I'll post it up here somewhere. So you can, uh, so you can find it. <laughs> Imagine like horses trying to put together an egg. I don't know, guys. Sometimes English nursery rhymes don't make any sense. But anyway, that's the story of Humpty Dumpty. Now, let's get back to this term here, biblical proportions. Now, I still didn't even tell you what this word means, right? Biblical proportions. Well, it means something kind of big, right? Something kind of cataclysmic. Have you ever heard this word cataclysmic before? Cataclysmic means we're talking about something like a natural event in the world that is, is huge and kind of disastrous. 
a lot of destruction, um, like, for example, maybe an earthquake or um, a tsunami, like I said, or some kind of a natural disaster that's just, it's a, it's a huge event. Maybe it wipes out a city or, I mean, maybe maybe it kills a bunch of people or something like that, right? It's, it's a cataclysmic event. Um, it's a huge, a huge disaster, right? So, um, you know, the, the, the reason it's biblical proportions is because in the Bible, I mean, if you've ever read the story of, like, if you've ever read the Bible, you'll see a lot of stories where there's like really big events that take place, right? Mo probably the most common one is the flood, right? So here's Noah's Ark, the story of Noah's Ark and the flood, right? The flood was a cataclysmic event, right? Where, where the whole world, like, got kind of just annihilated. The only, the only guy who was who was safe was Noah and his family in the ark. This boat, it was called the, the ark. Okay, so that's a, that's like a cataclysmic event, right? So if you read the Bible, you see stories like this. For, for example, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, where there's these two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah, with just really wicked people, full of, full of terrible people. And um, so God destroys those cities. But it's just, just kind of a, just a really like large scale disaster right so that's why that's why we have the, the 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 term biblical proportions like so if we're talking about an event today let's say an earthquake let's say it's a huge earthquake right and it just wipes out a city it just completely levels an entire city the word level means to just to wipe out to flatten the city Sometimes earthquakes do that, right? A really strong earthquake, you know, maybe like a, I don't know, like nine or ten on the Richter scale. That would just that would just level an entire city. All the buildings would come crashing down and stuff, right? So, um, so when we talk about an event in today's times, and if we say of biblical proportions, that means we're saying it's huge, just like it was back in like the Bible times. There's a huge event. So, like I said, we can use this term maybe to talk about like natural disasters. Like you could say an earthquake of biblical proportions. You know, remember the the little word of, okay? It's a famine of biblical proportions or a disaster of biblical proportions, a flood of biblical proportions, an event of biblical proportions. Okay, now, I mean, it, this doesn't have to do anything with the Bible. Right, this isn't like a religious term, right? Religious, I made air quotes again. Remember uh, a couple of videos ago, I made air quotes. Um, yeah, so it's in one of my videos. Maybe I'll post it up here for you guys to, uh, to see the meaning of air quotes. But um, biblical, right? It doesn't need to be like a, a religious term. You don't have to be talking about religious things. It's just, you know, it could be, it could be anything that, that has to do with your life. It could really be anything like, you know, you could say this, um, an evacuation of biblical proportions took place in Afghanistan. Remember a few months ago, um, the evacuation, I made a video where I talked about that, the evacuation of Afghanistan. <clears throat> so the evacuation, right, it was, I mean, it was a huge operation. Thousands and thousands of people were trying to escape from Afghanistan. So we could say it was an evacuation of biblical proportions. That just means it was a huge evacuation. And we're not talking about like one or two people or like a hundred people, thousands and thousands. So the reason we might use this term here, biblical proportions, is because we want the person who we're speaking to to understand that this is just, this is just a massive, a, a massive thing. We want the, to, them to get the idea that it's big. This is, this is a really big thing. So, guys, that's it. Um, time for homework. You love homework, don't you? I want you to leave a sentence down there in the comments with the term biblical proportions. Think about an example, maybe in your life um, or in your country or something like that, uh, where you could use this term biblical proportions. Like I said, it could be anything. It doesn't have anything to do with the Bible, really, um, except, you know, when we say it, we're kind of, we're, we're referring to something big like what happened in the Bible, 
but like I said, this isn't even a biblical, this isn't like a, it's not a religious expression. You could use it in any, in any context, really, just to mean something is big. Right, so guys, uh, that's it. Um, hope you found that helpful. Um, make your sentence down there in the comments. That's it for me here at Jesus TV. I love you guys so much. Stay safe, stay happy. God bless you guys. And I'll see you over in the next episode of Jesus TV. Peace be upon you.